Welcome back to the rivalry. I'm Dan Cummins in studio. This being the 116th meeting of these two football teams, you know, this is the 23rd time that they've been top 10 when they play. Back in 2006, Michigan was number two, Ohio State was number one, and the Buckeyes held them off in Columbus, 42-39. That was the week that Bo Schembechler died. A great rivalry over the years, and Lou Aver takes a look back at all the years, the origin of how we got this far, the border battle. I'm going to have to interrupt you. We got a big time battle going on right now the official this perennial gridiron collision that is waged every year between osu and michigan has been ongoing non-stop for about a century a rival that began as a recurring annual showdown back in 1918 long before there was a horseshoe in columbus or a big house in ann arbor but the very first meeting between the two teams was played back in 1897 it was collegiate football's first great battle of the border between Ohio and Michigan. The seeds of this rancorous rivalry between the two teams can be traced back to 1835 when Michigan and Ohio were ready to spill real blood over who owned the early real estate of Toledo. In all, it was about uh, uh, the territory as to whether the territory of Michigan was going to get the port of Toledo or Ohio was going to get the port of Toledo. And that's what it came down to. At the center of the dispute was this strip of land, the Toledo Strip, a narrow belt of landscape about five miles wide, a sort of no man's territory because of old treaties, bad map making, and too many surveys. The Northwest Ordinance said that we're going to run a line due east from the tip of Lake Michigan through the territories to Lake Erie. But it turned out, though, that Lake Michigan was much farther to the south than these first crudely drawn maps depicted. So the new line, the bottom line, put Toledo squarely in Michigan, including the coveted Maumee Bay and Maumee River, which back then and now was an economic plum for shipping and transportation, something worth fighting for. And in 1835, Michigan's boy governor, the 19-year-old Stephen Mason, was ready to do that, declaring Toledo belonged to Michigan. Even sending a deputy to arrest the wealthy developer of Toledo's Vistula area, Benjamin Franklin Stickney, in his home located where Riverside Hospital was later built. And then, of course, you have this, the famous incident of the stabbing, where the deputy of Michigan comes down and and two Stickney, which was Benjamin Franklin Stickney's son, second ends up son, right. second son because the first one was one. <laughs> the guy was just an imagination with names. And uh, he has a, a confrontation in a bar of all places, a tavern, and uh, he ends up st stabbing him. Well, two Stickney managed to escape, the deputy managed to survive. But the young Governor Mason was not pleased, and by September, he headed for Toledo with an armed militia to take it by force. Now, Governor Robert Lucas of Ohio wasn't pleased. He said he would have none of this nonsense, and President Andrew Jackson also thought the young, impetuous governor of Michigan had gone too far. And Michigan turns out to be the aggressor, which it is, by plan. And uh, there is a political solution. That solution was the Buckeyes were awarded the coveted Toledo Strip, and the Wolverines won the prize of the Upper Peninsula and eventual statehood. Thus, real war was averted. But better feelings lingered and displayed these days on the football field between the Buckeyes of Ohio and the Wolverines of Michigan. Once beaten Wolverines dominated the early play, Danny Klein started from his 33, slipped away. It is a rivalry with no rivals producing many memorable games and memorable players. One of them was Chick Harley, Ohio State's early premier running back who brought national attention to Ohio State from 1916 to 1919. He not only scored touchdowns, but he brought in fans by the thousand. So many that Ohio State then had to build a new stadium. It was called the house that Harley built. For Michigan, one of their most memorable players was Tom Harmon, Another running back who just couldn't be stopped. His speed and ballet-type performance on the field set records and won championships. In the 1940 Rose Bowl against Ohio State, 
he's seen here with his final touchdown. Old 98, as he was called, left many teams frustrated because they just couldn't bring him down. In one game against California, a drunken fan said he wasn't going to let Harmon go the day without at least somebody tackling him, so he bolted onto the field and gave it a try. Another memorable game between OSU and Michigan was in 1950, the day that Mother Nature won. Delivering a blistering blizzard on that November day in Columbus, five inches of snow on the ground, 30 mile an hour winds, but that didn't stop the 50,000 fans from showing up to witness the Snow Bowl. A sort of imitation of a football game, as frigid hands fumbled the ball and slippery snow greased the field for a series of spills, slides, and 45 punts. Boys, I don't want you on the football field if you're going to show any signs of apathy. Apathy. Right there. And avoid it like the plague. Well, no war is ever fought without its generals, and the future 10-year war between the Bucks and the Wolverines from 1969 to 1978 featured two of the best, Woody Hayes in Columbus and Bo Schembechler in Ann Arbor. No man is more important than the team. No coach is more important than the team. The team, the team, the team. The 10 year war between Hayes and Schembechler would pit some of both schools' toughest teams against each other over the years. It was a rivalry that was always with high drama and high heat. Woody Hayes on his trips to Ann Arbor would reportedly stop for the night with the team in Toledo because he didn't want to spend a cent in that state up north, refusing to even utter the word Michigan. Woody and Bo are gone now, but the rivalry in the game continues with no end in sight. Symbols of a rivalry that likely started 182 years ago, when both sides determined Wolverines in battling Buckeyes were ready in 1835 to get on the field and stand toe-to-toe -to -toe and battle it out to keep their grip on that first big trophy called Toledo. Louis Bear, WTOL 11.